We won't just now, but we may later on convert it to a parallax map, and then we'll need the height map. But let's just uh, create a regular shader here at this stage. I'm just going to pull them into my um, material. That'll be the ambient occlusion, that should be the metallic, yeah, that will be the normal, and that should be the roughness. Again, I'm just going to double check, uh, ambient occlusion, roughness, and this should be metallic. Uh, yep, good. What's going on here? <coughs> no. Just going to pull that uh, texture in again and see what's going on, why it doesn't like it. Let's uh, replace this base color. And that seems to have fixed it. It was just uh, occasionally I've noticed with UE4 with some of the textures you can it, it can complain. Uh, if that happens, just remove the texture it's complaining about and replace it. All right, let's um just rename this shader so I know what it is. We'll call it Mosaic Tiles. And let's um, fix the brass now. So I'm just going to import those textures we exported from Substance for the brass border. We've already got the color, so we need the uh, metallic, the normal, and the roughness. And we'll pull those in. Again, just going to check that's the roughness at the bottom. Yep, good. Save that. And I'm just going to find my model here and have a look at it. I think that should work for us. I'm just curious as to why, uh, maybe just the lighting, why my, my texture was looking a little light, but it seems to be fine. Let's uh, pull that model into our level. Work out which way we want that mosaic tile to face. And I think I want, uh, I want to rotate it around so that it's sort of facing when you would enter the door. So from this bottom edge here, I think I want that to face the door. We're going to, have to scale it up. Maybe a bit too much. I'm just gonna push it back to the door frame. I really don't like the uh, the color I'm getting out of that, actually. I want it to be darker. Before I look at the uh, material, I'm just going to make sure it is positioned correctly here. All right, 
Let's have a look at what's going on here with this shader. I might just break one of these to see what uh, effect it has on the shader. I'm just going to apply that and check my actual model over here. No, it's not the metallic. I'm going to break the roughness temporarily. It may be the actual um, color map that's, that I have a problem with. Yeah, it's not the roughness either, it's probably the color. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into Photoshop and uh, just make some adjustments to the color map. because I just feel that that tile is a little, little bit too light for this room. So let's uh, open up Photoshop. I actually wanted to shout out a thank you to, to uh, Moxigan and Newman for following the, my Twitch channel yesterday, guys. I didn't notice it when you followed yesterday afternoon, but uh, yesterday, but thank you very much for following my Twitch page. You posted a link for the desk? Cool, let me have a look. Okay. Let me just organize myself here. So this is a desk that uh, Kenu is working on for the room he's working on at the moment. In a, he's working in UE4. That's very nice. Very nice. Again, nice texturing work. Really nice. I like the way you've got going on. Yeah, that looks great. Really, really nice. You do, um, you, you, you're doing distressing really nicely. It looks really good. And the leather squares look great. Just be careful with, um, if you're going to be using this desk more than once, inside of whatever level you're making because these patterns are really going to be noticeable as being copied. Uh, if you're only going to use the desk once, not a problem. Um, if, if, just be careful placing too many copies of the desk relatively near each other because, yeah, these sort of really large patterns will really be noticeable as being reused, if you, if you know what I mean. That's, yeah, but if you're only using it once, not a problem, or even if you're using it more than once, but not near each other, it's still not, not usually a problem. It's only one time use, cool. Okay, not a problem. Uh, yeah, I just did want to point that out. With, with really large distressing patterns you have on any object, if you do plan on reusing it, you've got to be careful. It's a small office. Okay, cool. Not a problem then. And it looks great. Looks really nice. The, um, the office should look really cool when you're finished based on the assets I've seen you working on. It's looking really nice. Yeah, it does look great. Nice work. I look forward to seeing uh, the office when you're finished with it, if you can show it. I mean, I know not everything you guys do, you can, or you even want to show to everyone. But uh, yeah, no, I'd love to see it once you've uh, finished working on it. And I still love seeing the assets as you work on them. I'm just going to um, open up that You will? Cool. Excellent. I'm just opening up the texture here to look at it. Now the texture here doesn't look too light. I'm just going to jump again back into UE4 to see what's going on.
I want to know why this texture is looking so light. When it shouldn't be. It should be darker than that. So what's going on here? be the normal map that shouldn't affect it maybe the ambient occlusion actually let me just uh, break that link for a minute and apply that change we'll move that off to the side so we can see what's going on here okay I don't think it is. Uh, you'd like to hear my feedback on it, Kenny? Well, for sure. Um, when, you, when you're putting it together or you put it together, if you want any um, my opinion, then I'm happy to give it. I'm just going to reapply the uh, ambient occlusion map here. I don't think that's causing the problem either. Nope. looking at the actual texture in the um, viewport here and it looks light it shouldn't look that light if we look at the texture here in Photoshop it's got a lot more color to it so I'm just trying to work out why it's doing that Let me look at the see the original texture is very dark but it's showing up as very light doesn't like that it's not actually a linear color okay what's going on here um, I'm gonna re-import yeah I'm gonna re-import this uh, Texture, I think. Something not right here. Yeah. Is it a translucent material? That's a good question. shouldn't be it should actually be sRGB and it's not letting it doesn't like it when I actually turn sRGB on it does lighten it right up so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to resave this texture again We'll just give it another name. Um, I'll call it uh, Mosaic Color Tiles. Um, I'm going to save it as a PNG file. It could have been some strange interaction between my export from Max. So I'm going to import the uh, one we just saved from Photoshop. This one here. I'm going to see what that has brought it in as. No, okay. Let's swap this out.
looks the same. There's something strange going on. What could it be? I've not had this problem before, actually. I've not come across this sort of problem. Anyway, I want to replace that with this one because I don't like the name it, that this one has. So let's apply that. I, I know there's a problem though because it's looking too light here in the um in the sample. It's still too light. Has me stumped. I'm just going through these, um, the rest of these to see what is going on. The problem appears to be that the texture is being loaded up as linear colour and it shouldn't be. It should be colour. But the engine doesn't seem to like that for some reason. Alright, let's do it this way. Let's try something different um, to try and work out what's going on. I'm going to create a new material. Here we go. And we'll call it M tiles. I won't go too extreme here. I just want to test something. Okay, now let's uh, pull in our maps one by one. Let's still bring it in as linear color. really does not like it. All right, let's jump back into Photoshop again. I'm going to save this as something else and not a PNG. There is no alpha channel, so that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, let's save it as a... Okay, now I was going to save it as a Targa. I'm looking at my list here and I can't save it as a Targa. That tells me that there's something going on with the actual texture in Photoshop. So I'm going to go and check my mode. And this is the problem. You see, I'm working in a 16-bit color mode. I should be in 8-bit color. So now if I save this texture again, I'm just going to save over that mosaic color tiles again. We'll jump back into um, new E4. No. Back into our mosaic tiles. Must remember to re-import the texture again as well. Make sure to save the change again to the actual texture. Oh, come on. 
I've noticed this problem with Unreal. If you're working with Unreal and you make a change here in the texture editor to the texture, and you've already got that texture loaded up inside of a material, Unreal gets really confused. So I'm just going to again remove that and reload it. And re, re hook it up again to my base color. I've noticed this problem. I thought it was a problem with the uh, last version of the engine, but it seems to still be a problem. You see now it's not giving me any co compilation errors, even though I've still chosen color. So I'm just going to save that. And you can see now we have our color back in our tile. So the problem was initially, just to recap so we don't get confused, uh, initially the texture was set to a 16-bit texture which is uh, which was wrong. It has to be an 8-bit texture. I don't think that the UE4 engine actually reads 16 or 32-bit textures. I could be wrong. It, it may read them for maybe uh, grayscale but not certainly color. So that was our first problem. And then the second problem in UE4 was when we had our um, shader already made but we changed our texture here because that texture was already in the shader it wouldn't let me change from linear to color it seems to be a bug that's in, in ue4 at the moment with uh with these shaders just putting that out there for anyone that runs into the problem if they're using ue4 but now we have our shade out looking the correct color it's not that really light washed out looking texture now I think our size is okay so I'm going to duplicate this again I'm duplicating by holding down the alt key and moving in max you hold down the shift key and in UE4 you, you can hold down the alt key or you can right click and go edit duplicate whatever's easier uh, so now I need to rotate this one around We'll make sure it's right up against the door frame. And we need one more for down the other end of the hallway. Uh, again, I was used to max and held down the shift key. I have to hold down the alt key to make a copy in UE4. Now Sniper Echo is not in the stream, but uh, I, I did some research on deferred decals in UE4 that he was talking about yesterday. Uh, uh, I can see why you guys might be interested in using them, but again, they're calling them deferred decals. I think that's because you can move them around. Uh, so I was confused as to why they were calling them deferred decals as opposed to a decal. I think it's the fact that it's more interactive and you can move it in your level. Uh, but again, it's not something that it can be useful if, you, if say you're using a tile texture in your game engine. So you have maybe a small texture that's 512 by 512 or I don't know, a wood pattern maybe. And you want to tile that on like a wall. So you're going to tile it 10 times by 10 times, but you're going to start seeing perhaps a repeating pattern. You can use a deferred decal to actually put an overlay on top of it so that you break up that pattern a bit. Or you can use it for things like graffiti or grunge on walls, all that type of thing. They can be moved easily, yeah. That, that's that's what I got out of it, uh, Kanu. The main advantage of the deferred, deferred decal as opposed to a normal decal is the fact that you can move it around interactively in the viewport. It has like a, a bounding box and you can move it in and out of an object or, or above or below. So I can see the use for it and um, like I said, one of the uses I can think off the top of my head was to, to get some grunge happening on a wall to break up a tiled texture so you don't notice the repeating pattern so much. It can be useful for that. 
uh, it, they were very big uh, 10 years ago in games development when when people had no choice but to use tileable textures because graphics card memory was really low and computer graphics cards weren't as fast as they are now. So in the olden days, you had to use, make use of a lot of tileable textures uh, and decals were used then to, to break them up as well. Um, they're not used so much nowadays because graphics cards have a lot more memory and you're not restricted to as many tileable textures as you used to be. So they can still be useful. I can see why they're being, why you guys are interested in them. Uh, but again, it's an experimental feature in the editor. You have to actually turn it on as an experimental feature. So even Epic haven't actually ex uh, officially put it in the engine yet. It is there, but yeah, it's experimental. And now I don't know if they're, if they're doing that because they're worried that there may be some bug in it or what, but. And I, I certainly am not going to be using, um, oops, not going to be using them in this level. Simply because I don't have a lot of tileable textures anyway. Most of my texture work is uh, unique to the object, not tiled. So. There we have our tiled mosaic under our floor and that just helped to um, cover up that break between the floor section and the door section around our entryway. And the, uh, the metal frame just helps to give the tiles a little bit more interest as opposed to just having a plane sitting there with the, with the mosaic tile on it. Now we have it enclosed in this uh, decorative brass frame. Now this is a similar thing I'm going to be doing I think for the, um, for the floors. That brass frame you can see along here, along the edge of the tile. I think I'm going to use that type of thing to marry these two floor pieces together in all of the rooms. So I think what I'll end up doing is running a brass that a, a brass border like that all the way around in between these two different types of tile down here as well as uh, upstairs on the second level and um, also in the main room through here. Again, it'll help to add a lot more interest to the floor and it also helps to bridge, to marry those two different types of textures together better. So that's what we will be doing for the floors. All the floors probably. So we've got our mosaic tiles in. Uh, let's just move some of these around and I'm going to rename them. Mosaic tiles border underscore mat for material. Let's move those into the materials folder. Um, I don't think we used this one, so I can probably delete it. The engine will tell me if, it, if I'm using it anyway. It won't. It'll warn me before I delete it if, if I am. And let's move these textures into the texture folder again. I don't think I'm using this uh, old one, so I should be able to be able to delete it. Yep. Let's move these into the textures folder so we keep everything nice and organised. And finally, I'm going to rename the uh, the mosaic tiles mesh underscore msh for mesh, and we'll move that into the models folder. Now we're nice and organised. We have all of our things in all the right folders. It just helps if you want to find anything later on. And trust me. You know, it, when you when you organise yourself properly, it'll make your life much easier. Um, there was one other piece I wanted to bring in, which is the grate work that sits between the door under the door frames. So there's like a grate that sits underneath of these door pieces here. If I can 
get around. It's difficult to see here because of the door being in the way, but there's like a great piece that sits between the door frame. I want to bring that in. So let's uh, jump back into our temporary effects folder. Now that's nice and clean. And let's import the door grate. Uh, where did I put it? Where did I put it? There we go. Door grate. Now let's start by bringing in the um, mesh. Again, I'm just going to double check that it's laying in the right direction. Yes, it is. Uh, let's import the textures for that. So we want the ambient occlusion. Uh, I'm going to bring in the height as well as the normal because I'm going to make this say a parallax map. Uh, now, it saved me having to start from the beginning with the parallax map. I'm going to duplicate one we've already made for this ceiling. We'll use the one we're using for the main room. Um, I'll duplicate it and we'll call this one uh, Door Grate Parallax. Ugh, don't do that. Let's open that up jump back into our uh, folder so we can bring out swap out our textures we'll start with the color texture and then we'll bring in the normal map and the ambient occlusion And lastly, we have to make sure we swap out our height map, which is up here. Come on, let's apply that. It takes the shader a little bit longer to compile simply because it's a bit more complex than a normal shader. We'll save it. Um, again, I'm going to double click to open up my, my actual mesh and I want to swap this texture out with the one we just created. This one here. So now we have the illusion of a bit more depth going on than is actually there. It's just the parallax map faking it basically. Because that's simply just a plane. Let's save that. Okay. I'm just. Gonna angle my camera here so I can see a bit better, and um, we'll pull one of those door frames in. All right, <laughs> it looks like what's going on here is the um, pivot point is not centered. So right. let's jump back into Max because I have that uh, door frame here. It's this one here. Let's isolate it so we can see it more easily. Well, the pivot does look correct. I'm just going to make sure though. I'm going to um, again reset the pivot and reset the X form. Re-export the model.
Let's re-import the model again. There we go. Now it's in the right spot. Okay, let's rotate it around. And we're going to have to scale it up. I know it's a little difficult to see here. I'm just going to go into unlit mode briefly so I can see what I'm doing. Again, I want to make sure that's sitting just above the actual um, floor. And our doors are too far forward, they have to come back. Let's turn the unlit lit back on again. And doing this just helps to uh, blend those two different floors together between the two rooms. So we have our grate sitting underneath the actual door. And if anyone's wondering what this grate could probably be, it would probably be for like central heating. That type of grate that sits on the floor. It could just be a decorative grate, but, or a central heating grate. But I think we may leave it there for today, guys. Um, I do want to thank you guys very much for hanging out with me today and for watching the stream. Uh, I will be back on again on Monday next week um, at 5 p.m. Pacific in the US, 10 a.m. in Australia, 1 a.m. in the UK. Uh, if you're not sure, again, you can either follow my twi Twitch uh, page to get a reminder that way, or you can follow my Twitter account at Phil does 3 d because I post when I go live there every time. Uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I um, hope my workload's a little lighter this weekend, so I might be able to get to watch a couple of movies again. You're quite welcome, Kanu. Thank you for being here and for watching. Thank all you guys that uh, are here and are watching. Uh, I, like I said, I really do appreciate it, guys. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I will be back again on Monday next week. Uh, if you see my stream go live on Saturday, it's a vodcast. Uh, don't be like Nano and type into chat if I'm not there. Um, so Saturday is replay Saturday, so it's a vodcast on Saturday. But I'm live on Monday, Tuesday, and usually Wednesday, but just not at the moment. So every Monday, Tuesday, certainly. I'll be back on Monday next week. Have a great weekend, guys. And hopefully I'll catch you guys then. See you guys.